I want to introduce to you uh, a friend of mine who I happen to love very much. And uh, if you notice, there's a difference between us. Did y'all notice that? I'm tall and he's short. And, um, but what an absolute blessing to have him come and to share uh, this week with us. God has had his heart uh, kind of captured over this. He, he just keeps saying, Tom, you just don't know how big this is going to be. You know, I, I pray that when I get to heaven, somebody walks up to me and goes, hey, you don't, you don't know me, but y'all had this revival. And um, I changed my life forever because I was born again. And that would be great. Hey, absolutely. That's, that's the prayer. That's the prayer. But my real hope and prayer this week is that the church is changed. And, um, y'all, this isn't about black and white. This isn't about Hispanic. This isn't about any. This is about God taking his church back. And that's what our desire is tonight. Let me pray as Brother Mike Satterfield comes. And after I pray, I'm going to hand him this mic. And all I want you to do is I want you to sit back and prepare your heart. And say, God, I'm here because I need to be here. So, Father, tonight we come because we need to be here. People talk about a fresh word. We don't need a fresh word. We need to go back to the old word. God, we need to go back to the word of God. Back, The churches have got to go back to where it all started. So, God, forgive us when we think that we're greater than the word of God because we're not. There is nothing more powerful than the B-I-B-L-E. And Father, may that be the word for me this week. Father, I ask that you would speak through Mike. Lord, that as he prayed earlier, that he would decrease, that you might increase. And tomorrow night, in anticipation of who else is going to be here, we begin to pray, God, that we will be one body when we leave this place. Yes, there are some differences among us, but one thing we know, without the blood of Jesus Christ, there is no hope for any of us. Not by the grace of Jesus Christ. Calvary was my place to die. But you took your son and put him in my place. So Father, tonight we thank you for that and we prepare now to hear your word. Be with this man of God. Speak through him. And may our hearts be open and our ears be open to your truth. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Brother Mike Satterfield. Let the church say amen. amen. Are you ready? Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portal, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me, come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come, come home, come home, come home. Tonight, I don't want to waste a nanosecond of your time. Tonight, I know you got stuff on the brain, stuff on the heart, stuff on your shoulders, and school tomorrow. 
come home. Anybody weary? Anybody wounded? Anybody worn? Anybody sick and tired of being sick? Let me see your hand. Any, 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 anybody? Anybody? Anybody know the struggle is come home. Tonight, I want to talk about three questions, three people, and three acronyms. Three questions, three people, and three acronyms. You know what an acronym is, don't you? Pastor Tom told me you're the most educated people on the planet, so I don't have to break anything down. But an acronym is a word that you take the letters and make other words out of. Three questions, three people, and three acronyms. Question number one, you ever been lost? Oh, some of y'all go back because you've been so sanctified and spiritual. You don't remember what it was like. Anybody ever been lost in the middle of a grocery You got the parking lot speech? We going in the store. Don't you touch nothing. Don't you look at nothing. And don't you ask for nothing. In, par parking lot speech. And then you get in the store. And I know that they start touching stuff, looking at stuff, and asking for stuff. But then you get separated from the pack. You're no longer with the crew you came with. You find yourself on aisle six at Wally World. And no one you drove there with is around. You lost. What's the first thing that came out of your lips in the state of lostness? It's a sad feeling when you're lost. I know some of y'all who say you're spiritual. In that moment, you did not call on Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When you're lost, what do you scream? Mama! Yeah, come on, tell the truth. Shame the devil. Loss. First question, you remember what that felt like? It's horrible to be lost. Question number B. You ever been lost and running out of gas? In Jasper, Texas? Come on, somebody help me! And you didn't know where the next gas station Anybody start thinking about how heavy a vehicle is to push when you're lost running out of energy, lost running out of options, lost running out of friends, lost running out of know-it-all? It's a sad feeling. Number one, to be lost. Number B, to be lost and running out of gas. Third question, I'm trying to hurry, but my soul is happy. You have been lost and ain't nobody looking for you? Some of y'all were dropped off somewhere. <laughs> and they pushed the gas pedal to get away. You found your way back to the crib. <laughs> they couldn't outrun. Been lost and nobody's looking for you. Where's the preacher going at the Waller County? Revival 2019. Here's where I'm going tonight. There are 2.6 billion people on the planet lost. In third world countries, people groups that nobody is going in here and you're sizing me up and trying to see if I'm worth my salt. Let me just serve you notice. Dynamite comes in small. <laughs> Package. 2.6 billion people on planet Earth are lost and not a soul is bothered to go find them. Can one dude go get 2 points? Not at all. But what if all of us in this region of Waller, what if we made up our mind at this revival, 2019, that we're going to get on bended knee and pray like Jesus did until sweat like drops of blood fall from our brow. That not a single soul will know what we know about being lost. Not tonight. Not a single soul will leave this place feeling lost and running out of gas. Not tonight. That there will be no one under this tent of meeting that will leave and be lost and fretful. Ain't nobody coming after me. 2.6 billion are in that predicament. 
And did you pray tonight? Oh, some of you lifted up a hickory dickory dock prayer. Some of you, now I lay me down asleep. And you fell asleep before you finished the prayer. But who agonized? Who got on their face to the mother's dust and said, not on my watch over my dead body. I refuse to let a soul be lost in my county. A soul will not be lost in my family. Not a soul will be lost in my church. Do you know folk go to church lost and leave in the same condition? Not your church, but other churches I've been to. Three questions. I need to introduce you to three people. His name, J. Edwin Orr, leading authority on revival. In the 40s, he taught at Wheaton College. J. Edwin Orr took a group of people to go visit John Wesley's encampment in England. Took a group of collegiates to go see John Wesley, the father of Methodism, and where he launched revival, crusade, impact to reach the nation by fruit in England. And he took the tour of the compound and they wound up upstairs where John Wesley used to pray. And there upstairs, next to his bed, were two grooves. And the grooves came from bended knee. I wonder if I came to your crib. Is there a place that is so worn because you've been down on bended knee, looking up to the hills from which comes your help and strength, and crying out to the only begotten to do something supercalifragilistic, expialidocious? Exceedingly, abundantly, immeasurably more than any of this activity could ask, think, or... Two grooves worn next to the bed where John Wesley didn't pray for me, myself, and... It wasn't a selfish mandate. He prayed that all of England would be revitalized, that all of England would be revolutionized, that all of England would be revived so that no one in his country would be lost. I hope someone comes home tonight. I hope. Because the tour concluded, and J. Edwin Orr took his group back to the vehicular mobile. You know, like you got here on the church van. And as goes tours, you do a head count to make sure you didn't leave anybody behind. They counted off one, two, three, four, five. Somebody was missing. J. Edwin Orr said, stay on the van. I'm going back in. He went back into John Wesley's place and looked all around. Couldn't find the missing student. He canvassed that place where the Methodist church got its launch. Couldn't find the student. Something men and said, go upstairs to the upper room where Wesley lay his head. And J. Edwin Orr went in the room and there kneeling in the two grooves was the missing student. And he approached and was about to call the student's name until he heard the prayer of the student. You know what he was asking? Do it again, God! Do it again, God. In my land. My Father, forgive us, for we know not what we do. J. Edwin Orr touched the student on the shoulder and said, It's time to go. And the student rose with tears running down his face, sweat coming from his brow. Do you know who the student was? Anybody? Billy Graham. again God that young boy on a college tour under the tutelage of a leading evangelist teacher cried out because John Wesley did the same by example but this we're not stopping J Edwin Orr this is not about John Wesley we're not stopping at Billy Graham Jesus son of the living God do it Somebody in the crowd is saying, why is he so loud? I want all of Walla College to, County to hear what God is saying in this place. Why is he so loud? Because you get loud about what you're passionate for. Any golfers? You ever shank one? 
What happened when you hit the ball amiss in a four-man scramble? Brethren, it appears I've hit the ball wrong. <laughs> Let us tiptoe to the next hole and give it another game. No! You start breaking clubs and throwing bags in the lake and driving the golf cart off a hill because you lied about what you're passionate for. Jesus, do it again. Get some folk home. That's my prayer. And it leads me to Matthew. That was my introduction, chapter 28. And in Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20, for fear you thought I wasn't going to open the scripture, the word of the living God calls us to see him do it again. That's the only prayer I have. I wish I was more astute. I wish I was more theologically stout. I wish I had a hermeneutic and a homiletic that wowed and impressed you. But this ain't about any of us. It's about the word of the living God who invites lost people to be found. Those who are far from a peaceful shore to be brought within the realm of peace. And the scripture says, verse 16, Matthew 28, then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted the revival would work. Not y'all, but other crusades and revivals I go to, I found that when they saw him, some worshipped and some out. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go, shout go. go. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that's another acronym. I got three of them. I told you about three questions. I talked about three people. Here, three. Go! Somebody shout go. go. I figured it out. I'm not the brightest bulb in the pack, I'm not the sharpest tool in the toolbox. But can we break go apart? Here's what it means. God ordained. You don't have to go to cemetery. I mean seminary. You don't have to be the sharpest attired in here. All you need to do is go. Because the scripture says all power has been given to me in heaven and earth and I have ordained you to do something. Get up off your blessed assurance. And press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling, which is untheos in God through Christ Jesus. Not that you've already attained everything, but one thing you could do. Forget what happened on your drive with them people that got on your nerves. Come in here and take hold of what Christ has arrested you for. Go! The lost 2.6 billion deep are waiting on you. Touch your neighbor and say, you're plan A. Come on, they didn't catch it. Touch them. You're plan A. This is class participation. Now touch him again and say, there is no plan B. You're it. And if you don't go, who's going? And if not now, then when? And if not this gospel, what are we going to tell the world? Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck 12. And the, what are we going to tell them? With our hoopology. And with our intellectualism, well, brother, it appears that I have studied to show myself approved and I have entertained all the celestial truths of my bent and uh, my philosophy and my the... Uh, hush! And go! The devil knows the books of the Bible. And you hadn't impressed anybody until you lived the verse. And Matthew 28 is clear, it's explicit, it is simplistic, it calls on us to do something. Don't be a hearer of the word only, somebody shout, go! Because no. God ordained, and God approves of this message. Well, go ye therefore and teach teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever he's commanded. And he said, here's the promise, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. He ordains it and he will not leave you alone. He never leaves nor forsakes, doesn't allow your seed to beg bread. God is with you and if God be for you, who 
can be a, no weapon. I ain't scared. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I got, God ordained that I be on co-mission with him. I'm not alone. Anybody ready to go? I understand us figure it out home because oftentimes there's something in your way and I brought a tool to help us figure it out. It's another acronym. It's DEMPTY. Anybody? You educated it's DEMPTY. D-I-M-T-Y. This, this is what we do when we go. The scripture tells us, but I think we need some extra help. DEMPTY. What does it mean? What does it mean? It's an acronym. Do I matter to you? Everybody's asking the question. They asked when you stopped at the stop sign and looked into their vehicle, all up in their business. They look back, do I matter to you? They're asking tonight in your family unit, why don't you tell me you love me anymore? And he leans over, I told you I loved you when I married you. If anything changes, I'll let you know. Wrong answer. The question is, do I matter? Can I break it all the way down? You ever go to church and they do the past the peace, they do the introduction to your neighbor, they do greet the people who are here for the first time? I'm going to demonstrate. It's a question, do I matter to you? And it's inevitable. Come on, brothers, let's show them what it looks like. That, that when I go to church, the pastor, the worship leader says, go greet your neighbor, and I, hey, man, it's good to see you. Hey, thank you for coming. What's up, bro? <laughs> My man, what up, dog? How you doing, man? I've been waiting all week to see you, bro. Hi, mama and them. What's going on with you? Boy, we've been separated since birth. It's good to see you again. What did I just say to this one? You don't matter. I was being cordial. They said, say hello, and I said hello, but my boy from the womb to the tomb. <laughs> this is my click. Y'all don't have clicks at your church, but this is my. It's us four, no more. This, this is the. Do I matter to you? Look at me. You don't get this size on celery sticks and rice cake. We eat pancakes with butter and syrup. <laughs> Pray for the preacher. It was my son's birthday. He's at Texas State University. I went to San Marcos, took him to IHOP. And there at IHOP, Joe, the waitress, came to the table and she said, can I help you? I said, what is your name? She said, Joe. I said, Joe, how can we pray for you? You know how many Christians go to IHOP? You, you know how many failed to ask Joe what her need was? And she walked around wondering, do I? I was there. But I was going to break the cycle. I was in IHOP, not for the Rudy Fruity Fresh. And I was there for Joe. And I said, Joe, how, how can we pray for you? She was blown away, had never been asked a question. She looked at both of us and she declared, pray I bring you your food. <laughs> I said, what? what? Who, who are you? I said, beyond that, Joe, we didn't really come for the food. We came to be a blessing to you. She sat down and said, just the other night, two days ago, my sister tried to commit suicide. I'm here at the job hanging like a loose tooth. And we answered the question. Not only do you matter to me, you matter to God. Joe, can we pray for you? She sat down to be prayed over. I never had so much sweet tea poured in a cup in my entire life. I had to leave IHOP and go to Walmart and get grown-up Depends. <laughs> Blad touch your neighbor and say, what is, what? They'll tell you later. <laughs> Joe was just blown away by the blessing, and we didn't leave a witness track. We gave her money, 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 money. Y'all not ready, y'all. We blessed her. Then I went to the church called Calvary where I was preaching that revival week and I asked the church, go to AHA. Don't order a thing. Ask for Joe. And bless her so she can get home. Joe got saved that week. Because she matters. 
curse fell based on the word of the living God. Well, go. And as you go, answer the question. And do not leave a single solitary soul feeling as if they didn't matter because you matter to me as much as my dude matters to me. I love you, I love you, and ain't nothing you can do about it. Now, don't get creepy and hug people and put your leg or Don't do that kind of... <laughs> Too much! You know who you are. <laughs> Since y'all not going to invite me back, I'm going to get all this out that I can. Look at it in Acts chapter 3. In Acts 3, 19, here's what happens when you don't go. Here's what happens when you don't answer the question, do people matter to you? And don't start with reaching Ukastanistan, because a lot of us will go across the globe and bless a world and hate on the folk in our own home. Start at the house and sweep around your own front door before you come sweep around. <laughs> That's the Williams, bro. <laughs> Here's the challenge. Acts chapter what? Verse what? 319 says this. Repent! <laughs> That's the third acronym. And I'm going to take my seat. Get out your afro, your weave, or whatever you got on top of your head. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And anytime you hear a word from the Lord, it demands a response. And if you refuse to respond, that's the definition of sin. It's rejection. And partial obedience is actually disobedience. So don't do a little bit and then straddle the fence because fellas, you'll sing soprano. He wants you either high or you stay over there in the cold section. But lukewarm will be spewed. Repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing revival, revitalization shall come from the presence of the Lord. Do it again, Jesus. I come with head bowed, repentant that I've not answered the question enough. I come repentant with head bowed because I hadn't gone enough. I come to you because I take your word for granted and I'm not living the word enough. And Jesus says, repent. Can I quickly break that down? Repent has an acronym that launches out of it. R stands for read. Study to show yourself approved, truly a workman, not a shame, rightly dividing the word. Read the word of God. Don't cursory read. Don't run by it quickly. Be still and know. Be like a river that has a tree. Plant it deep in its water. Be like the one who tastes and see that God is better than Campbell's soup. He's mm, mm. good. Read. Take the word in. It's sweeter than honey. On the honey. It's a lamp to feed, a light to pass. Read the word. I know you like all the extra biblical material, but only the word of the living God goes out and doesn't come back empty handed. Only the word of the living God has power to cut sharper than a two-edged sword, dividing bone, marrow, soul, and spirit, reaching into the intent of who you are and who you ain't. How do I read this? But that's good preaching. Preach, Mike. Read. How do I read, preacher? You ought to read the word until the word reads you. I ought to cut you and you bleed the word of the living God. Somebody shout read. read. That's an E in repent because you hadn't read like you should. Some of y'all went to church and let somebody else read for you. You ever have to wait on the words to come on the screen so that you could sing the song? Because you don't really have a song to sing to the... I ain't trying to be mean and obnoxious and rude, but can I tell you, we are a hallmark Christian kind of society. We let somebody else write our love story to the Lord who loved us first. Come with me as you read, and then E stands for exit your selfish ways. Can you consider with me, I married my wife 29 years ago. We've been married 29 years. Same woman. 
29 years. Every chance I get, whether by phone or in person, I tell her, you're welcome. <laughs> she get chocolate thunder. Oh, just. And you know what she says back? What else you got? That ain't right. I tell her to repent. But here's the deal, when I stood before God at an altar and before an officiate, a preacher, to be married to that beauty queen, she had eight bridesmaids. I didn't even know eight dudes. I had to find people available that would come and just stand proxy in order for me to marry this queen. And as I stood there, the preacher said, do you take? I said, yeah, I do. And then he looked at her, will you take? She said, yes, I will. And in that moment, what if I stood back when the preacher said, you may now kiss the bride and told my best man, kiss her and tell me what it was. Foolishness. But you live vicariously through the pastor. He does all the hospital visits, all the funerals, all the counseling. You let someone else stand in the gap asking, answering the question that matters most in a world. Can I just say this? I'm trying to hurt. Exit. Your selfish ways. I hadn't read. I've been caught up in my, I think the axis of the universe revolves around me. I'm not repentant. I am not going. And I'm not answering the question as it ought to be answered. And I'm repenting tonight. I'm turning from my wicked ways because if you're headed in one direction, repentance says do a 180 and go the opposite way. I'm trying to get deep like you real theologians, but here's the deal. Don't turn 360 back to the mess and tell God, I turned. Face. That's not what it requires when you repent. It's an about face. You've been to a scary movie and you've heard the dun dun. Dun dun. Dun dun. dun, dun. Hey! Who's out there? Dun, 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 dun. Who would go out and investigate? The, guess who won't do it? Because we always die first in the scary movie. I ain't going. And you don't go by yourself. You dun, dun, dun. Hey, guys, I hear a noise. Let's all go and see what. No. The challenge in the word is that you exit self because heading into darkness and hearing the noise that invites you is doom. Repent and turn your life around. You don't have to head to darkness when there's deliverance. You don't have to head to H-E double hockey sticks, almost said hell, when there is healing in the opposite direction. You don't have to enter into failure when there is faith. The size of a must touch your neighbor and say repent. You need to exit. And Galatians 2:20 helps me with Matthew 28. I've been crucified with Christ. I don't even live anymore. The life I live now, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. The P stands for pray. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous. It's gonna avail much. It's gonna accomplish much. tonight. If you hadn't prayed, start now. Because somebody on your row needs to come and be found. You're not looking for Jesus. He ain't lost. It's you in Walla County. And you may be going to church, but going to church doesn't make you any more saved than sitting in a garage makes you a Cadillac. <laughs> Repent. Ask God's forgiveness for doing things your way instead of your way. Pray that God would visit and do again what he's done to save a lost and dying world from a pathway to a death in hell. There's another E, and it stands for exalt. Jesus declared, if I be lifted up, you know what I'm going to do? All of Walla County. Let me see the hands of those who believe. He can do it. He's able. And he's willing. Can God? Say it backwards in repentance. God can. You miss it, you miss it, you miss it, you miss it. If I'm going in a direction and I'm asking, 
can God? If I turn around, what does it say backward? Yes, he can. He's a deliverer. He's an on-time God. He specializes in second chances. And tonight, if you've been off base, tonight, if you've been far from peace, tonight, if you've been wayward and wounded in such a way, you are retaliating and trying to get people back. God says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I'm going to give you something in exchange for that heavy heart. I'm going to give you rest. Anyone? That's what the invitation is going to look like. Read, exit, pray. And exalt the name of Jesus. Because there's an end that says notice. On your row. Did somebody come hurting? Did somebody come with more month left in money? Is somebody here expectant? Like the evangelist on the front row, my dear sister, who says, I came not to look at you, Denzel look alike. I came. She didn't say that. She, I threw that in. You supposed to say amen, though. Help a... <laughs> Somebody said, a broke Denzel. That ain't right. <laughs> Notice there are needs all around you. And I'm not trying to be loud just to be loud. I want urgency to define what we're about this week. You ought to fill every chair. We ought to cut through this roof people down not to see a man but to meet with the Messiah who's worthy of the highest praise the last letter as you start to notice there are needs on my row I've overlooked and I'm the most needy person in this revival do it again God show us your glory like never before. The T stands for trust. You lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he starts to direct your path. I can sum it up in this way. There was in the midst of a young man's life a challenge. His name Fred Craddock. Fred Craddock said he was ugly. Bandy distinguished professor emeritus at Candler University, Hot Atlanta. Fred Craddock said he was scrawny, he was ugly, he was not prolific in athletics. Anybody know of Fred Craddock? Don't look out, blink if on your row. No, no one would count them in because they were not even chosen in gym class to balance the team. Fred said, that was me, but I played a mean game of hide and seek. Fred said, my sister and I played on our farm a game of hide and seek. Y'all know the game? Somebody's on base, they're it. Everybody else, when they count to 10, goes and hides. Fred Craddock said, I'm the champ of hide and seek. And so he and his sister were playing. She was it. So she went to the base, and she began to count. 1,001, Fred started to go to his best spot. He was so scrawny, he could fit up under the porch. He laughed, she'll never find me here. She's counting a thousand, two, three, a thousand, four. He's giggling, <laughs> not loud, but under his, she'll never, she'll never find me. <laughs> Fred is up under a thousand, seven, thousand, ten. She cheated. Ready or not? Here I come. Fred didn't care. She'll never find me here. And his sister left the base and passed by the porch to the front door. No Fred. She left the front door, went to the pasture. No Fred. From the pasture to the barn. No Fred. From the barn to the treehouse. No Fred. He's giggling. She'll, <laughs> she'll never find me here. Ten minutes later, Fred realized she'll never find me here. <laughs> Lost. So he stuck his toe out. Wherever you are. Porch and said, I see you. Come out, come out. Wherever you are. Come here, Walla County. Because Fred got from under the porch and dusted himself off. He said, You got me. Now I'm it. But can I say something prolific? 
Can I say something profound? Isn't that what everybody here wants? To somehow finally be found. Come out! Come out! Wherever you are. You'll never be found under the porch of dismay. You'll never be found under the porch of loneliness. You'll never be found under the porch of bitterness and hatred, prejudice, and distance from that which is relevant today. Stuck in your traditional way. You'll never be found if you're grumbling and complaining and laughing at others' expense under the porch of sin. Repent! Because God is here tonight. And he's declaring, ready or not, here I come. What do I do, Jesus? Go. Because God ordained. What do I do, Jesus? Answer the question. Everybody's asking, do I matter? Do I matter? Do you ought to rehearse it right now. You matter to me. You matter to me. You matter to me. You may get from under the point. Dust yourself off. Come with me. I'll escort you to the altar. Repent. And turn your life around. Because the God I serve has made himself present in scripture tonight. And the word of God declares. You want to hear it again? He says, repent therefore and be converted that your sins dun 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 will be blotted out and you won't be destroyed by the noise of this world. Jesus says, all power and authority is mine to get you from under the porch and make you the most likely to succeed. Because here I come. I'm going to ask the ministers come to this altar. And tonight, anybody who hadn't gone, and you know you desperately there, you'll rise from wherever you've been stuck. Nothing magic at this altar, is it, Pastor? But it's something about taking a step from under the porch of your life. Nothing up here superstitious but it's something about I'm not heading toward that noise and I'm not taking anybody because misery loves but I got a Messiah who busts through my misery and makes it well. Come on. I need preachers, pastors, counselors up here. I don't know what everybody else is waiting for, but you join them and tell them I hadn't gone. You come out of your row and tell them I hadn't answered the question, nor has it been answered for me. I don't feel loved and I am unlovable. But tonight, Jesus has come that I might have life, not by the hair of my chin. There's a Joe in this room whose suicide has visited your life, your family, interrupted your peace, and God says, come, while the blood is running warm in your veins. Repent and show fruit of your repentance by rising and coming for prayer and letting go of your problem and circumstance.